All right. Thank you so much for being here. We are here to learn about utilizing case studies and real world examples in teaching. We're very happy to hear from Rosalind Mize and Rachel Lewis. Um, we're going to start with Rosalind. So Rosalind, I will throw it over to you and get us started. Thank you. I'm Rosalind Mize. I have been teaching logistics and business at Nashville State for um 13 years, and I've utilized case studies for that many years. I've utilized case studies for quite some time. I think um, with a subject in business or logistics, it's it's fairly common. It's really it's really easy to integrate a case study into uh, into the coursework. Um, I use case studies because students, for a number of reasons. Um, one of the main reasons is it's a critical thinking exercise, and that's usually what I call them. So when I title them in D2L, I, I typically don't label it as case study. I'll label it as a critical thinking exercise because that's really what it's meant to do. It's meant to enable students to think about the content that they've learned and the foundational knowledge and synthesize that and apply it to a, a real world example. Um, and also very important for me with case studies is I make it very clear to my students that um, the case studies are, uh, I mean, they're graded. They're a big part of the, the grade. So they're, I mean, they're, you know, I, I want students to take them seriously, but there are no right or wrong answers with the answers for a case study. So a lot of these business related case studies or logistics related case studies, um, the question, you know, it'll have, and I'll show, I'll, I'll, if I can share my screen in a moment, I'll, I'll show one from a textbook that's pretty common, but it'll give you a scenario about a business and what it what it's doing or what it needs to do or what it's trying to improve or what it's having an issue with and there's a series of questions and it's really they're asking for students to make a recommendation or think about the knowledge that they've learned and critically apply it to a situation um so what i tell my students is that there are no wrong answers so some answers are stronger than others you know, some recommendations are better than others. Some ideas are better than others, um, but nothing, if they can back it up with something, if they can support their response to a case study with something, some some evidence of why they think that's a good recommendation or why they they feel like this is the best choice, like this vendor is the best choice or that transportation mode is the best choice and they can back it up with something. Um, even if it's really not ideally the optimal choice, I think, well, they've they've thought about it, they've applied some knowledge and they've made a decision and they've critically thought about it. And that's really the goal um, for me. That's what I want my students to do. I want them to critically think about the information and how they would apply it. And the case studies are really beneficial because they're real world examples. And so oftentimes what you have is you'll, I don't know if anyone else feels this way. I feel this way sometimes where I have to um, I have to reiterate to students like, look, this is, you know, you, they really like logistics managers, they use these techniques, they use these forecasting methods. Like I'm teaching you applicable things, things you will actually carry with you into industry and use in the real world. And that seems to increase engagement with the subject matter and the case studies are just an extension of that because it is usually a um, a real company that's having a real issue. And then they get to learn about the company, they get to learn about the issue and they get to think about a possible solution. Um, and knowing that there are no wrong answers, that they don't have to really stress about finding I'm not looking for anything specific. There are times where my students completely surprise me and they think of something that has not ever occurred to me. And I'm like, wow, that would, that's interesting. That, that's really an interesting solution. I, I, I had never thought of that. 
Um, I think that adds a level of, um, I don't know how to say, I think it makes it a little bit more interesting. I think it makes it a little bit more engaging. Um, and then they can really uh, think about the content, think about the the scenario and apply um, apply what they think would be the best way to go. But if, I don't know who who is, who is who is already using case studies? Rachel, I know you are. Okay, so Brianna, um, where do you find your case studies? Are they in the textbook or? So I use some from our textbook. Um, our microbook has quite a few case studies built into it and our AMP textbook has some. But I also just this semester, and I was going to talk about this, started making my own, but I mm -hmm. used AI to make my own. And I was pretty proud of the outcome. I mean, it took me a few tweaks um, to create case studies with it, but I wanted something that they didn't have access to just look up the answer. Oh, that is such a they good idea. It's about giving me the right answer for diagnosing right. something. And I'm like, I need to, you need to walk me through how you came up with the answer. Mm -hmm. So now they can't just Google it and it's like copy and pasted from a textbook somewhere. Yeah, that's a really, that's a really, really good idea. I never, I never thought about that, but yeah, why not? Why not utilize AI in that way? Um, well, since we're, I think since everyone here is familiar with, um, with a case study, I don't know if you, if I really need to show you one that I might use, but um, I will say that after this many years of using um, case studies and emphasizing the real world examples, emphasizing that this is not just an, an assignment, it's not just an exercise for you to get a grade and move on. Like this is something that you really can apply if you, if you get employed in this field. Um, I really do. I mean, I, I, I see it in the feedback. I think I see it in the grades, but I really do think that it increases the engagement and the interest of the topic. Um, you know, think about when, when you were a student, something you really thought you were never, ever going to ever use ever. Um, and maybe you thought, what is the point? Why are we doing this? Like, what is the point of this? Um, so when you can make it, when you can give them the why of it, um, and how they might use it, uh, it, it's beneficial and case studies are really, are really great for that. And it looks like, so you're using it in a uh, STEM, like a science. And I know I, in business and marketing, we, we are very heavy on the case studies and I'm sure there are many different fields of study that could utilize them as well, but okay. I'll, I, I will step back now and let, uh, Rachel speak. So. So I also use case studies and I actually beefed up my use of case studies this year. So previously we've talked about them in class, but I haven't taught very much online. It's kind of been hit or miss. Some semesters I do, some semesters I don't. And I've always used them in discussions for my online courses because then they get to, you know, pitch, this is what I think it is, this is how I arrived at that answer, but then they read someone else's post, and they're like, oh, you made a good point, maybe that is the disease, and then they go back and forth, and like the whole class is trying to figure out who has the right answer for a whole week, and so I started using them also um, more in my on-ground classes as well. I've always used them to a small degree in our lab settings, where they have to like figure out and apply the knowledge they already have to figure out, um, you know, what part of the body would be damaged if a bullet hit like this area and all of that. Like if an internal injury occurred, what systems would be impacted? And so critically thinking through a lot of that. So it was to build a lot of their critical thinking skills, but I really started beefing up the use of them. And Mostly for the critical thinking aspect, um, I am looking for a correct answer technically. They don't get any points deducted if they don't come to the right diagnosis, right? But I 
I am hoping that they arrive at, you know, what disease it's supposed to be. Um, because in the real world, most of the students I have in a and and micro will be going into, the bulk of them will go into nursing school. We will have some going to OT and PT and, you know, all the other types of health science programs, but all of them to a degree have case studies built into their curriculum. And so they need to be able to arrive at the correct answer. I don't count off points at this level for not getting to the correct answer, but I want them to be able to critically think through it. And then also work in a group. I've started, I've always been anti-group work for many years, many, and then I went through a queue and decided, okay, maybe I should really start actually using group work. Like there is a point behind it, no matter how much I didn't like it in school. And so I've started building those into group work assignments because in the real world, they're probably going to be working with other people to try and figure out these real live case studies. It's not just going to be one person doing the diagnosing. You know, there's going to be a team of people. And so I've started building it in with the group work in mind because that's real life situation. And that's also why I, how I pitch it to my students, because they always groan when I say group work. They're like, oh, what if someone doesn't, you know, participate and I'm like well that's what the after assessment is for so you can tell me you know who participated and what you contributed and also I make them do part of it in the discussion board online so I can see them who is actually participating um, and contributing to that when it's a group assignment but I pitch it as this is applicable to your future career you're going to have to be able to do this in a group setting you're going to have to be able to work with other people to figure out what this disease is. Um, and that way you can lean on each other because you're going to have knowledge someone else doesn't have and they're going to have knowledge you don't have. Um, so that's been one of the biggest reasons I did it. Um, I think they're great in discussion boards, especially if I break them into small groups in the discussion board. So there's like four people assigned to this um, case study and for more people assigned to this case study. I've even done it where they all had the same case study, but I broke it down into small groups of four or five students so that you could see everyone coming to the conclusion, right? And getting through and critically thinking through it uh, because you have people that do want to lean in and they're very gung-ho the first day the discussion boards open and then you have people that wait till day five to start adding in so I didn't want all the information to already be out there and so I break them down into smaller groups so critical thinking and group work and the group work was new for me this semester but it seems to be working so Awesome. Thank you for sharing. And Brianna, if you would like to share as well, you're up next. Hey, sorry, I was trying to get off of mute uh, and back on camera. Uh, but thank you. Yeah, so I do, do utilize a lot of case studies in my class. Um, my class is structured from what it sounds like a little bit different from what everyone else's class is structured like. Um, mine is a TBR certified course. So the ability and flexibility to add to and change um, and do the AI um, version of case studies, which by the way, I love. And I did that and then I got in trouble for it because it, it you have you like you can't change uh, anything in those classes. Um, so lesson learned. But it's a wonderful tool, and I loved it. We did it in business school in my doctoral program, um, and it has been, I mean, it really kind of makes you think a little bit differently, and you can't just Google it uh, and figure it out. So um, really, really good uh, advice. But so I did something a little different that I was allowed to do, and so I always kind of like to, to talk about what's different about my courses because they are so inflexible in what I can and can't do. Um, but I was able to get approved integrating uh, guest speakers into the specific areas um, to come into my courses to bring some real life um, aspects to those case studies uh, and kind of 
to have a, a live case study discussion, I guess you would say. Um, and also I utilize YouTube to find real world case studies that were relevant to what we were learning back about in that module. So every one of my modules have a YouTube video that gives some real life application on the topic that we're going to be discussing. It may not be necessarily a case study, but it's going to be experts in the field, well-known people. Um, I've got everyone from Elon Musk to Jeff Bezos um, on there. So there's a wide variety. And I always try in my business course, I see a lot of different um, people in my introductory um, discussion anyway. I ask them, what are you most interested to do in business? And so I always try to like tailor some of those YouTube videos to things that my students are also interested in so that as they go through the course, they can identify themselves with what we're talking about a little bit and go, oh, yeah, I really wanted to go in the trucking industry. And she's got a YouTube video about how marketing relates to the trucking industry. So I'm going to pay extra attention and get really, really engaged with that section. Um, my students absolutely love it. Um, I've had a lot of feedback from them that this helped them make sense of the content and how they're actually going to be able to apply that content to wherever they're going. Um, I know it gets really monotonous when you're talking about some of the micro details of business or healthcare, because I'm a nurse also by trade. Um, and so as you go through those things, you're like, am I ever going to use this again? I remember thinking of that about algebra. So I try to make sure I remember that when I'm choosing uh, those videos. So it's, it's a lot of labor of love up front to set your course up and find those. But then I just embedded them. Um, so my students could go straight to them. They don't have to watch the um, like advertisements. Uh, and that has been a really big success on bringing that content into real world application for my students outside of those case studies. Um, because my case studies are strictly by the book. There's right, there's wrong answers. Um, so it's a little bit different. And I also try, I don't try, I have it set up in my actual intelligent agents um, that every week um, I do a debrief of what the content and the different modules we covered and how that is going to really be able to be utilized in real life. So I kind of give them a synopsis of, I know we're studying um, fair market value and you're maybe wondering how does that really play into the big scheme of things? Well, think about you have to be able to prove that when you're going to do leases and you don't want to overpay. If you underpay, that can actually be a problem too, depending on what industry you're going into. And so um, I give them like little synopsis and some kind of real life application, as well as bringing those experts in. I've been successful in bringing a couple of them in because I'm on a online only platform. Um, participation can be fun. Let me just tell you. Um, sometimes they'll log into those voluntary Zooms. Sometimes they won't. Um, so what I've done is created interviews um, where I just get on with my industry experts. Most of them are my friends or um, someone that I know in the industry and they're kind of all over the world. Some of them are even my, my personal clients that'll do it for me to talk about business aspects uh, that relate to our module topics. Uh, and I've created like little interviews. So I'll pop those into my newsfeed and say, well, watch an interview on this module's topic. Uh, with an industry expert to see how that relevance can can connect. So it's been really, really helpful for the online platform. Um, it also, if you want to look at all the positives, there's m way more positives than negatives. But one of the negatives uh, that I've noticed with it is it also makes my students feel a little bit overwhelmed because they're looking here, they're looking there, and they don't know where to go. So I have to make sure I do a really good job of saying, hey, this is just extra for you content. If you want to dig in deeper or you want to learn more or you're struggling in this area, maybe this will help you. Um, so they don't get so distracted that they miss their assignments or uh, don't know which assignment needed to be answered by which, which video. But all in all, that's really the only downside I've seen is just it gives them so much to look at. It can be overwhelming depending on the, the level of student and how long they've been in. Um, national state or in college in general. Um, but that for me has been a really, really big success in my, my courses. So. Awesome. 
I love learning about this. This is very fascinating. I had not really thought about using case studies in my classes, but I'm kind of, my brain is firing of how it might be useful in my class as well. So um, I guess, uh, do we have any questions? Does anybody want to talk about anything else further that we've brought up so far? I will piggyback and say my students do get overwhelmed, especially on the front end, because I start week one with a case study and they have a lot of things they have to look up because they're very medical based. So I'm giving you like lab findings of tests they've never even heard of before. And so I found that on the front end, it really helps if I give them, especially for the first couple of case studies, go look at these specific resources to try and help them break down the case study. Okay, this is what this test means, or this is a reputable website I can get an answer from instead of Wikipedia. <laughs> because they like to go with random uh, websites sometimes. And I'm like, I don't know who created this. And that may or may not be good information. I, sometimes I get YouTuber links and they're not reputable YouTuber links. Like if I watch three of their videos, half of the content will be wrong. Yeah. So I have to really enforce with them reputable websites to look up your materials, knowing where to go first, like the World Health Organization and the CDC. Those are the first two places I send them for everything. And so getting that going in the beginning is really helpful because they don't, they don't know how to look the things up. They don't know how to start and they don't know how to process of eliminate down. So the first couple I have more guided than the rest of them will be. So they kind of get harder as they go. Excellent point, Rachel. Uh, and yeah. I see this thing. I'm having to um, handhold a little bit on the front end um, to get them through it. But it's so worth it in the in the back end. Um, I feel like it's been so, so worth it. They come out more prepared for the next course or to move into starting that LLC for the first time. I get less questions on why this content matters. Yes, absolutely. Like, why do I need to know this? Well, here's why. Rachel, if you ever want to get into any autoimmune type diseases, I have some lab work that okay. has, like, they will never see this type of lab work like anywhere else except for a rheumatology type okay. study. That would be neat. Yeah. Yeah, using AI um, this semester, I wanted some case studies on some very specific diseases that like the book mentions in passing, but we don't really get into. Um, and so that's where I used AI was to create some of those. And then I did it for two reasons. One, because they just couldn't straight Google it and find it from a textbook page with the answer posted but also because I could really control what I put in the case study to guide them through. Like I gave them, I made sure I gave them very specific things that if they looked this up would only apply to that disease. And so it would kind of help them process of eliminate and get to the answer that I was hoping that they would come to. Yeah. And mine gets a little bit complicated because they have to keep in mind that a certain subset are going to be zero negative. So the results are all going to be either normal or just a hair off of where they're supposed to be. So, yeah. Awesome. I love the practical application of um, critical thinking skills because that is one of the key outcomes of my class is better critical thinking skills. Um, so I think that is uh, something I could definitely utilize um, to help, you know, measure one of my outcomes. That would be really cool. So great. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.